earlier today, we did see stocks hit positive territory for the year, but the rally has faded late in the day on some selling pressure. So how can investors make a profit in these uncertain times? So let's get some answers with Larry Cantor, head of research at Barclays Capital, along with Phil Town, author of Payback Time. Gentlemen, it's good to see you. Phil, you called it right. You knew <laughs> when to get out of this market and when to get back in, that being last March. You're the man with the plan. Where are we going from <laughs> Where here? Where are we going from here? Well, I think, you know, those calls were pretty obvious to a value-type investor, right? You're looking at a Come really on. high market. <laughs> obvious. Come on, man. Pretty obvious. And when, it, when the market's at 6,700, I sent out an email and said, you know, I don't know if it's going to go to 2,500, but I'm loading it up. So, you know, right now we're at 10,000s. And what I have to do now, I think, is what everybody should be doing, and that is what I talk about in my book, find a really good company and get it when it's on sale. Don't be looking at the market itself and trying to make a broad market judgment. Yeah, that's, that's, right. that's the title. Payback time. Big, uh, making big money is the best revenge. Congratulations on the book. So, so Larry, let, let me get your take on that, investing in this environment. You've talked a lot about investing away from the United States, mm -hmm. emerging markets is where the growth is. Are you right. sticking with that plan still, or do you want to put more money to work in, in the U.S. right here? We like both, actually, and I think Phil's right. I mean, this is now a stock picker's market. We had the big rally when valuations a year ago seemed ridiculously low, um, and so now you got to be more picky. That said, we still have zero rates. We're still in an early stage of an economic recovery in the U.S., and we've got deleveraging, which the other side of that is corporations and households are now paying down debt, which means they're saving and buying financial assets instead of spending. All this is still supportive for financial assets. So I think we still still have a ways to go here. What does that mean in terms of investing? I still prefer equities to, to bonds um, because, you know, interest rates aren't going down from these levels. They've got one way to go, and that's up. Probably not anytime soon, but at some point they're going to go up. So I'd rather stick on the equity side. Yeah, Phil, you talked about pick, picking best in breed, but I mean, what is an investor to do when you, when you have all of this risk out there? If it's not Greece, it's going to be some other country, whether it's three days from now, three weeks from now, or three months from now. You've got some headwinds coming out of Washington, whether it's bigger regulation, tax increases, you've got currency concerns, you've got interest rate hikes on the horizon. And a slow economy. Uh, yeah, and a slow economy. And, and, uh, and I'm not smart enough, and I don't have a clue. And and so <laughs> for that reason, I can't look three days, three weeks, three months, Scott. I got to look out, you know, ten years, and I got to say, okay, is America a good bet? Yeah, but the last time we looked out ten years, we went nowhere. So. Oh yeah, but good companies didn't go nowhere. Okay. Well, if you companies look ten years ago, money. though, it's been a tough. Sl I mean, you're always going to have a lost decade from time to time, I guess. But the last ten years ha has been just that. It's true, but when I say ten years, I mean ten years in terms of finding a company that you think is going to be a good long-term investment, right? And then get it when it's cheap. I don't think it's going to last ten years before it's not cheap anymore. I think in this kind of a market, those terms last a year or two, and it goes from. You know, fifty dollars to a hundred dollars, and all of a sudden you're really cranking real money. You telling me not like mutual I, I funds, ETFs? Funds. We're not, we're not, we're not supposed to look at anymore. Are, are you picking individual mm. stocks? Individual stocks, because mutual funds, I think. I, well, I talk about it in the book. I think, I'll just say it. I think they're a ripoff. I think you're getting a point and a half taken right off the top. It's a haircut. I think if you're not going to learn to do individual stocks, get a good ETF, get SPY. This is very out. important, that you, the point you're making, because most people don't realize the fees involved. And by the time you're paying for all of the you know, trading, you've, you've actually given up your gain right there. So yes. it, either an ETF or, or yeah. stock John, John Bogle, I mean, he, he says that about 50% of your retirement money is removed over a 40-year period by that 1.5% fee. That's a, that's a big chunk. Yeah, I, I'll make the point, though, that you, you still have to be selective in the ETFs that you're going to be investing in, because there are certain ETFs that have underperformed uh, as sectors, like technology, for example. If you would have bought five or seven years ago the technology ETF, or if you would have bought Apple, you would have been much better off buying an individual stock rather than oh, the I, ETF, because you would have totally, outperformed it. I totally agree. I don't think you should be going out there and picking, like, sectors. I think you, you, if you don't learn how to invest, then you got to pick a broad market fund. If you're going to learn to invest, then pick the Apple with the Steve Jobs, with the great technology. Go for that. Is that what you're doing as well, quality, whether it's inside or outside the U.S., Larry? Yeah, I mean, we're, uh, you know, what I would say is What's there's a trade-off here. This is what I would say, and that is that, I mean, Phil's right. You get a better deal, but you got to know more about the markets to do that. So you get a return on research and understanding the company, but you got to do some work. If you're not willing to do that work, you're going to have to buy some kind of broad yeah. sector or broad market. That's the point. Totally agree, Larry. Uh, and, so, and so that's, I think, the, All right. the idea. We will leave it there. Larry, great to have you on the program. Yeah. Phil, good to see you again. Great Best to see of you luck on the book. Right. We'll care. talk with you soon. Phil Town, Larry Cantor.